looking forward to this talk. Will you please put your uh, hands together for Steve Glaveski. and apparent cultural appropriation aside, I was like most other kids my age. I was curious, creative, and adventurous. So much so that my sister took advantage of this fact by dressing me up in her old clothes and makeup. Yes, that's me in a, in a dress. Now, I'd like to say that I had no say in the matter, but 15 years later, I found myself playing in a glam rock band. And Zebra print pants and makeup was nobody's choice but my own, sadly. But then something happened. Something strange. This happened. As I sought to meet society's expectations of what success actually looks like. <laughs> this time was, um, it wasn't all bad, it was characterized by a six-figure salary, I used to take business class flights around the world, and I attended corporate junkets like this one, emceed by none other than TV's Road McManus. <laughs> Again, questionable hand gestures. The only thing missing from this was roller skating monkeys. But despite all of that, work started to feel like I was in an assembly line, just executing. You know, in contrast to the creativity and questionable fashion choices of my younger days, I was simply executing on a set procedure. I wasn't creating anything new. And so I was ultimately, what I like to say, miserably comfortable. And so I started living for the weekend. <laughs> Getting up to all sorts of alcohol-fueled shenanigans. Sometimes, standing up. But then I was struck by an unlikely source of inspiration. An empty office space. And like every second person in the startup ecosystem, I decided I'd build a marketplace. An Airbnb for office space, as it was, called Hot Desk. And so I spent about $2,000 building a little prototype. I sent, uh, I wrote a press release on my own by Googling how to write a press release. And I sent this press release to 100 journalists, any journalist who had their email address available on Twitter. Of course, days went by, weeks went by, and I heard absolutely nothing. Until one day, a cadet journalist from the Australian got back to me and said, hey, we're interested in writing a story about this. And then two weeks later, this article dropped. And I was working at Macquarie Bank at, at the time in Sydney. And the article mentioned that I was an employee. So it promptly got picked up in the Macquarie News. A daily email of news clippings mentioning the bank that gets sent to 14,000 employees, including my director at the time, who asked the question, what's this hot desk stuff all about? And I had to assure him that, don't worry, it's just a little side project. That little side project, within three months of this article dropping, turned into a $156,000 seed investment. So naturally, I thought, <laughs> I've made it. But I learned very quickly that I hadn't made it. <laughs> and that one should, one should never conflate raising capital with market validation. And that what got you here in the corporate world, the character attributes that underpin success in that world, will ultimately be your undoing when it comes to entrepreneurship. Because in one world, you're dealing with certainty and you're playing defense, whereas in entrepreneurship, you're dealing with a lot of uncertainty, you haven't even got a business model to execute on, and you're playing a lot of offense. So you can't rely on voracious planning, research, and analysis that you do in the corporate world. Sure, I had no problems building the supply side of hot desk up to thousands of spaces, but demand, that was a different story. And so, after a couple of years of this journey, I started reflecting on the underlying why. And I realized that this was something that I wanted to keep doing, but if I was going to keep doing it, if I was going to keep pushing that boulder uphill, I needed to do something that I truly believed in. And so, as Kyle mentioned, this is my mission today. And I deliver on this mission through Collective Campus, which since establishing about three and a half years ago has worked with over 50 big brands globally and incubated close to 100 startups. But he has not been without its challenges, like many an empty classroom when we were first starting out. But the thing about that is, if you have purpose at the core of what you do, it's much easier to push past adversity. And when you have purpose at the core of what you do, the customers eventually appear. 
So today I wanted to share five key learnings on going from employee to entrepreneur. One, don't compare yourself. Inevitably, if you're going to compare yourself to your colleagues who are still in that world, they're going to be making more than you when you first make that jump. So you need to just put that aside for the first year or two and focus on other metrics of success. Don't compare yourself to other entrepreneurs, particularly those who've been around longer than you. If you're going to compare yourself to anyone, only compare yourself to yourself, to who you were yesterday. <laughs> Two, every no gets you closer to a yes. In fact, make friends with no because it is your teacher. For example, if you've submitted a proposal to do some work with a big corporate and they reject you, fantastic. Find out why. Find out what would have turned that no into a yes. Ask them. What were you out of 10? Were you a 6 out of 10 for buying? What would have turned that 6 out of 10 into a 10 out of 10? And it could be a number of variables that you can learn from and take forward. Focus on your strengths. It's tempting to try and do everything when you start a business. It's, it's tempting to try and correct all of your weaknesses, your marketing weaknesses, your web development weaknesses, but you should focus only on your strengths. Um, outsource, cut, and automate everything else. Be Michael Jordan in a Bulls jersey, not in a Chicago White Sox jersey. Your ideas are probably going to suck when you first start up. Kind of like my discussion with Derek and Steve Young football. Kind of like New Coke. But that's okay. By going on that journey, the answers tend to present themselves. Just like the story of the shepherd in Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. And finally, always be testing. Whatever idea you've got, whatever business model, chances are most of the assumptions that underpin that business model are going to be flawed. And the better you get at effectively defining, testing, learning, and adapting, the more likely you will be to succeed. So nowadays, aside from Collective Campus, we run Lemonade Stand, a children's entrepreneurship program that's been rolled out to over a thousand kids and has just been turned into an online platform that we want to scale throughout schools in Australia next year. The Future Square podcast has received half a million downloads, and Concrete just raised over $2 million to help make raising capital easier. Now, this was all because one person decided to reconnect with that childlike curiosity within, which now sees me getting onto stand-up comedy stages and surfing or trying to surf, definitely not as good as Lane uh, a few moments ago, and jumping out of planes. And that's why I wrote Employee to Entrepreneur. Because imagine if not one person, but if thousands of people who currently find themselves miserably comfortable working for a large organization earn their freedom to do work that truly mattered. Not only would it have a massive impact on their own lives, but so too it would have a massive impact on the world. Thank you very much.